Hey, it's Matt Chu from Upright Health. Today we're gonna talk about bone-on-bone -bone hip pain, especially as it pertains to hip impingement. So you might be concerned about it because a doctor has told you that your bone shapes are incorrect, they're totally wrong, and they're causing the bones to prematurely jam together when you do things like squat down or try to bring your knee towards your chest. And because of the way doctors look at this problem, it sounds like the only thing you can possibly do is cut the bones to create more space so that your bones don't collide. Before you go too far down that path, I want you to realize that the space between bones throughout your body is tiny. And many times, like when you do things like jumping up and down, your bones are going to collide. And you'll notice that children, adults, teenagers, none of them really feel pain when bones end up colliding. So when you're thinking about hip impingement, you might want to put that in your mind and think about how can I address something else? How can I address the muscles that help keep the bones moving correctly? And one question to ask yourself is whether it's possible that the muscles that are deeply and completely surrounding the hip joint could be the things that are generating the pain. Since bones themselves, even when you do things like this, don't really hurt that much, what is it about slow motions where you're bringing one body part towards each other that creates such intense pain? And what we've seen, in case you're asking that question, is that muscles are not functioning well. Those muscles need to learn how to function properly so that they don't feel like they're jamming and they don't complain that they're too weak or too shortened or too tight. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple things you can try if you're experiencing some quote bone on bone pain especially if you get it in the anterior hip. So a lot of people with the FAI diagnosis, they find when they go to squat down, they get this jamming feeling up front. And this can be because of muscles in the front. So I'll link to some uh, videos where I show you some exercises you can do for your anterior hip. In this video, I'm gonna show you something you can do for your hamstrings and also for your posterior butt. So both areas are gonna influence how much flexion you can get in your hip. If the muscles here and here are too stiff, they're not able to lengthen, you're going to find it difficult to actually bring the knee towards the chest. This is a problem I have had and it's taken me time to fix and then the problem came back because I didn't keep working on it and then it took more time to fix that problem. So I have experience with this and we've seen a lot of clients have the same experience. So. One thing I wanna have you do first is get some sort of a strap or a band, and then you're just gonna lie down. Now, this is a simple hamstring stretch. A lot of people have tried something like this, and what they do is they go hurrah, hurrah, and try to pull it as far as they can, and either their knee bends, or they do the thing that I've seen me do, which is you go hurrah, and then you start cheating the angle, or your hip, the pelvis starts to move to get a weird angle on the stretch so that you get farther without actually feeling it in the right place. So when you're doing this, I really encourage you to go slowly. Start way down here if you need to and start coming up like this and slowly pay attention to where you're getting it. You should feel this in the hamstrings, but if you feel you're like twisting like this or turning or you feel your pelvis hiking or you feel your back arching a ton, then you may be cheating this. So one thing that I notice with myself in a cheat I would do was I would arch my back a lot and hike my hip. So then I could get farther and I thought like, wow, my hamstrings are so, so flexible. What's the problem? But if I didn't allow the pelvis to turn and tilt and I actually flattened my lower back, which was very counterintuitive for me, then when I started to pull, I would run into, oh man, lateral hamstrings, that is really stiff. What is going on there? I thought it was flexible. Also, I had to pay personal attention to the angle. So some angles can be really flexible, other angles may not be so. So you wanna be playing around with which angles actually are stiff and tight on you and recognize that you need to clear it all up. So this is something we talk about in the FAI Fix program. Um, when we coach anybody who's a client, 
We want to make sure that they explore angles, explore positions, because maybe, maybe you're flexible in one angle, but that's not the position that's going to challenge muscles correctly to improve things like squatting. So maybe you have to be stretching your hamstrings more out at an angle. Maybe you need more adduction and across the midline. You're going to have to experiment. And for a lot of people, especially if you're a weightlifter of any kind, you're going to need to do it all. Now, another great exercise that can be helpful is one that Shane, my partner on the FAI Fix program, is a huge fan of, and it took me forever to really appreciate how useful this was. But basically, you want to work on trying to get the posterior hip to stretch out. So what you can do is just post up on top of one knee, and you want to start out way over in front of with your, your upper body way over and in front of where your knee is. And then you kind of shift over like this, okay? So you're shifting over and then you're shifting back. So you're trying to get stretch deep around the hip. Now you might think, oh, isn't that just gonna smash my bones into other bones? Not any more so than what's happening at your wrist or your elbow or your shoulder. It's really important for you to get over the fear that the medical system has instilled in you because it will stop you from being able to move at all and then you'll get a surgery and then you'll still not be able to move properly because you will have to do a lot of rehab to try to get all these muscles functioning again. So let's just work on getting these muscles to ease up. There are deep, deep muscles in here. They wrap all around the hip joint. They can feel intense you can modulate the intensity so it's not crazy, so you don't feel super scared, but you want to be making sure you're making progress and gradually going into deeper and deeper hip flexion. If you feel like you're getting jammed in the, in the front of the hip, you're going too far. Keep the sensation back here. You also notice with this leg, I'm just blocking my ankle and I'm blocking it so that my leg is in a little bit of internal rotation. That's because for me, that's a big challenge and I like working on hip internal rotation. You could also change this, and we mentioned this in the FAI Fix program too, is go into hip external rotation, right? Turning, or even like that, more, right? And it's the same exercise, you're still trying to get, still trying to get stuff in the posterior hip by leaning into it, moving over, you can move to the side, right? So these angles or these angles, all these things can help you find really stiff parts of your posterior hip, which will then, once you've loosened those things, help you bring the knee up towards the chest. A lot of people, myself included, find that when you try to lift the knee up, you get this external rotation happening. Some people will cheat and go this way. Either way, you wanna be clearing it up so that you don't feel the pull and the restriction from the posterior hip. So for example, if for me, I lift up and I get this, for me, I found that is because I had insufficient internal rotation. So that's why I liked blocking my leg into internal rotation and then going deep into it, going deep into hip flexion, stretching out the lateral and posterior hip. Now, if you're the opposite, if you find when you go up, you actually go into internal rotation, you definitely want to be working on external rotation, but that's actually pretty rare. So most people got to work on both. A lot of people are have just really, really, really bad hip external rotation and hip internal rotation because when do we ever do that stuff? The only time we would ever be required to would be if we were doing like dance moves. And since very few of us dance in uh, very acrobatic ways in modern life, we just don't get that get that uh, that stimulus for our hips. So anyway, you've got these two two different things you can be working on. I would pair them up. I personally do pair them up. And what you can do is work on them between, I would say, 60 seconds if you can gut it out. Don't do it so intensely that you just like can't stand it. And you just have to get out after 10 seconds. That said, if you're somebody who is really, really stiff, you've never been in these positions before, you've never really tried these, it's gonna take time for them to feel even remotely comfortable. So set a timer for a minute, go into a level of intensity that you can stand, that you can, you can, folk, that you can still maintain a regular breathing pace with, 
And as you're just hanging out breathing, see if you can let those muscles relax a little bit more and more and more, All right? If you can't keep a straight, straight, straight knee, then do it with a little bit of knee bend, but always be focused on feeling the right muscles in there getting challenged. Same goes for this little glute stretch, all right? That can be really intense, and if it feels like you're <laughs> then you're in a panic, you need to just back out of it a little bit and take your time, get used to it, breathe, hang out there for a minute and get familiar with the position you're in. Doing two sets seems to be a pretty sweet spot for most people. It's been really good for me. Uh, we've seen it be really good for clients too. It's enough to gradually make some change and it doesn't feel overwhelming and it doesn't get too boring. So doing that, two sets, those two exercises twice a day can be really, really helpful for restoring some of your range of motion and getting this stuff to clear up. So when you, if you have this kind of issue, if you've been told like, oh, you've got bone on bone, I really encourage you to dig deeper into that story. I'm gonna link to some helpful resources in the description box and maybe drop it in the comment section too that'll help you understand where the medical perspective comes from and why it can mislead you so badly and cause so much harm in the long run. Be sure to check out those links. Uh, if you do have the FAI diagnosis and you're feeling really scared and you don't want to get the surgery and you want to look for ways to help yourself, be sure to check out the FAI fix, which I'll also link to down below. And if you found this video helpful, click the like button, subscribe. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.